Hey guys, Alex Williamson here today. Uh, just wanted to talk to you about a couple things combined, which maybe you wouldn't usually think about, and that is Taiwan, Singapore, China, uh, Japan, and uh, the U.S. and the shrimp trade of the Neocardinia shrimp, uh, which we all know as cherry shrimp, or blue velvet shrimp, or blue dream shrimp, or yellow electric shrimp, or, you know, there's a million names for the different variants. Uh, but I want to talk about the history of that and what makes it kind of funky and weird uh, of the geopolitics going on about all that. So, uh, first off, I wanted to say that I'm starting a new colony of some Blue Velvet Dream mix. Uh, it's not... It's blue Velvet and Blue Dream uh, shrimp. Uh, some are a little more light and have banding on them on their uh, on the outside, whereas others are just solid dark, dark blue. And I picked up half of them at Aquarium Zen uh, in Seattle, and the other half I picked up at Aquarium Co-op in Edmonds. I don't know if this is going to be backwards because uh, of the selfie mode, but... I uh, just wanted to thank them for all their information, hard work, all the stuff that Corey does on the website and that Robert does holding down the shop. So thanks, guys. Awesome to uh, come into the shop. I picked up uh, three shrimp there and another three shrimp from AquaZen, which is kind of a natural uh, aquarium shop in North Seattle, which is also really awesome, really helpful people there as well. Uh, now, let's walk over to the fish tank, and we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in the world of shrimp. So, right now, you can probably see, let me see here if we can get this, uh, get this in sight, but you may notice, I don't know if you tank aficionados, but, uh, aficionados, sorry, bad joke, uh, this tank was made in China. Now, What's kind of interesting about that is it is housing blue velvet shrimp. Uh, you can see one up on the rock up here and another one down below in the grass. I'll zoom in on those in a bit. Uh, but China and Taiwan, which is where these are sourced from, have been at odds for uh, since the Cold War, really, uh, the 60s kind of peaking. And what makes that interesting is that we have two countries that don't get along. China claims that Taiwan is actually still part of mainland China uh, politically, and Taiwan claims that it's its own country and has its own government. Now, another odd twist on this is that the Neocardinia shrimp started getting popular in Japan. Now, Japan has another relationship where it's friendly with the U.S. and Taiwan somewhat because of mutual trade, not as friendly with China or um, or the uh, the politics going on in China, even though there's sub substantial trade going on. So the first place to popularize shrimp keeping, really, as an aquarium hobby, other than local shrimp, the first place to really get these Taiwanese freshwater species was Japan. In the late 1960s and 70s, they were uh, an addition to small indoor koi fry ponds, and they were popularized. The, the variation of the Neocardinia was uh, Davidi or Davidi, Davidi uh, shrimp, and they have all stemmed from what we think of as cherry shrimp. And they have a wild counterpart that is brown, they have a wild counterpart that's kind of blue, and so there's different different types of the shrimp uh, that existed in the wild already. As you've seen with like lobsters and things, they just throw out random blue ones every so often, kind of like albinoism. It's just a, a chromosomal uh, trait flaw. Um, and in the wild, they don't do as well as the other shrimp, so you don't send a, tend to see huge colonies of it. Now, that being said, the we're buying these shrimp now in the U.S. that have been popularized since the 90s, really, uh, outside of hobbyist groups. Let me just say that. I, I don't want someone commenting, like, back in 1964, I was keeping blue velvet shrimp, and we used to call them blue velvety bee ba da ba 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 So... I don't know. You guys, please tell me if I'm wrong. If, if you had shrimp way back in the 50s or something that I don't know about, let me know. 
Uh, they weren't formally discovered in science until 1938, so, I mean, that should tell you a little bit about the limits of how old they are in, in the hobby. But, so these shrimp that are living in my guppy fry tank, living in a Chinese tank that doesn't get along with the Taiwanese government, raised and mainly from lines that were Japanese, then sold into the U.S. in the 1990s after 20 years of being popular in Japan, along with the Amano shrimp and tiger shrimp uh, and crystal shrimp, Taiwan bee shrimp, uh, all of those shrimp, which are, those ones are all in the care, uh, in their own Caridina uh, family, not in the Neo family. Um, but the cool thing about blue shrimp is that variance is pretty popular. So if you've got Bloody Mary shrimp or if you've got yellow shrimp or orange, uh, anything pretty much any color, I'm trying to think if there's exceptions, can throw out blue because it reverts back down the gene line. Um, another interesting thing about this whole uh, craft and hobby is that blue shrimp uh, at first were seen to be harder to raise, but now with the genetics uh, being taking more wild strains and strains that came from both red uh, cherry shrimps that were throwing off oddballs and into uh, the brown chocolate shrimps that were throwing off oddball colors and all the way down to the yellow and the jade. Um, jade of course has that pigmentation in it also with the yellow. Um, now we're getting really hardy shrimp and so both the cherry and the blue uh, shrimp as well as the orange shrimp are all really hardy freshwater shrimp if you're looking at keeping them. I just thought that it was kind of an odd quirk that a country that doesn't get along uh, in Taiwan and China are... China is growing the most of these shrimp for the world market. Then they get to places like America and Europe and they become uh, hybridized and they become selectively bred and more and more hardy. Hopefully people are breeding back in wild lines every once in a while. And that allows them to withstand water parameters from anywhere from 50 degrees to 70. Uh, they like 72. They live a lot uh, longer life if you keep them colder. If you keep them up in the 76 to 80 degree range, they'll still live, but they will die a lot quicker with maybe like a year and a half or two year lifespan. Uh, they will also reproduce quicker, so it's kind of your call on what you want to do in that scope. But the cool thing about these shrimp <clears throat> is that they're really easy to take care of, they're a great cre cleanup crew, and I just find the little twist of the fact that a shrimp from Taiwan, discovered by uh, World War II era anthropologists and botanists and uh, naturalists, basically, then were popularized and brought back as specimen to live in koi ponds to eat algae and to eat poop, which they don't actually do, but that was part of the thought was that they could do that. Uh, they became popular as they began to throw off brighter colors when you have 10,000 of them in your pond or, or whatever. And once that got popular, as with many things, it started to get mass produced in China. And then from China, it spread back to Japan, back everywhere. Now Thailand's also a large supplier of these just because of the temperature. It makes it really easy to grow them in these massive ponds. But I just wanted to touch on that kind of quirky little thing that these are a shrimp with politics tied in and when you look in your tank you can think I have a Taiwanese shrimp that has probably genetics that go from Japan to China back to Japan then to Europe or the US then to my local hobbyists and that's kind of cool it's a very global thing to have in your fish tank to have these shrimp uh, specifically the red and the blue varieties uh, the other ones, more specifically, are bred in the U.S. usually. Now we've got a very popular culture the last 20 years of taking care of these shrimp, and people have really mastered that. And so we're not seeing as much of the wild caught straight here unless people want that for, like, a special hobby. So just wanted to touch on all that. Also kind of interesting is that all of those countries, Japan, Thailand, China, and... Uh, Taiwan are all fighting over islands in the South China Sea currently. And so 
these shrimp now live on and they have no idea what's going on in the world around them. But I just wanted to give you some info about shrimp, uh, the history of the breeding of shrimp. I'll get into more about each strain and who popularized that, when it came out. But I just wanted to talk about kind of the historic and twist of fate of how they became a popular household pet. And I think it's great that we continue that. They're great for nano tanks. They're great for just shrimp tanks on their own or for helping clean up in like small fish fry tanks. I have them in my guppy tank and with my uh, Corydora hybrosis, uh, small teeny Corydoras. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Let me know if there's anything that you want to uh, check out like and have me look into as a, as a formally trained historian and anthropologist. I find it fun. So if you can think of something, you know, like a, a Congo Tetra that has come from a war-torn area, let me know, and we'll look into that. We'll talk about it, and if this keeps gaining steam like people seem to be digging it, then I'll, I'll uh, make some videos with a little more production value and um, maybe video clips and charts and things like that. So thanks for staying tuned, and look out for the next video, guys. Take care and keep on swimming.